Greetings, YouTube. The doctor is in. Dr. Urius Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and Dragons. And today on the Doctor Spell Prognosis, we are talking about the spell Create Undead. Uh, you know, I was thinking I was going to give this one a C minus. I'm actually going to give this one a D plus. This is a pretty stinker of a spell. I, I'm going to tell you I'm giving this a D plus for pretty much one reason. I don't think that this is a six level spell. I don't think it equals the power of other six level spells. So, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or comment, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. All right, so it is a six-level spell. It takes one minute to cast. It has a range of 10 feet, verbal, somatic, and material components, which include one clay pot with grave dirt, one clay pot filled with brackish water, and 150 gold-piece black onyx stone for each corpse. Each corpse. Now, it doesn't say those are consumed, so you could probably use those over and over and over again. So, uh, you cast this spell only at night. You choose up to three corpses of medium or small creatures within range. Each corpse becomes a ghoul under your control. GM has the statistics. This is pretty specific, so they become ghouls. As a bonus action on even each of your turns, you can mentally command the creature. Uh, if it's within 120 feet of you... You can decide what the action is, where it will move during its next turn, and you can issue a general command to make it do things. Um, if you issue no command, the creature only defends itself against hostile creatures. Once given the order, the creature continues to follow it until the task is complete. So basically, if you say attack that guy, then they'll just attack that guy until it's complete, and then they'll be done. So you don't have to actually give them another, well... Uh, I, you know, it's kind of confusing. It says, as a bonus action on each of your turns, you can mentally command any creature you animate with this spell. But I would say if you give them the one command to do the thing, they'll go do it until it's done and you don't have to keep telling them to do it. So the creature is under your control for 24 hours, after which it stops obeying any command you have given it. To maintain control of, a, of the creature for another 24 hours, you must cast the spell again before the 24-hour period ends. So basically 23 hours and 10 minutes. The use of this spell reasserts your control over up to three creatures you have animated rather than animating new ones. So you can cast the spell at a higher level. If you cast it as a 7th level spell, you can animate and reassert re control over four ghouls instead of three. That is really underpowered, massively. Because there are some 7th level spells that do amazing things and way more amazing things than just control 4 ghouls or animate 4 ghouls. If you use this as an 8th level spell, you can animate and reassert control over 5 ghouls or 2 ghasts or whites. Again, way underpowered for an 8th level spell. And if you use this as a ninth level spell, you can do 6 ghouls or 3 ghasts or whites or 2 mummies. Again... Ninth level spells, way they're way more powerful than that. Okay, this is very similar to Animate Dead. I actually think Animate Dead is kind of within the confines of the spell. <clears throat> so, um, with the base Animate Dead, you can assert control over up to, and it doesn't cost any money, so you can... As, as, assert control over up to four animated zombies or skeletons. So I think Create Undead is not on the level of a six-level spell. Definitely the seventh, eighth, and ninth level options are not under that level of power. It is probably more like because Animate Dead is a third-level spell, maybe a fourth-level spell, fifth level spell at the most that's really stretching it so now one thing that kind of could make this spell worthwhile is if you're a necromancer then you do add a little bit more on top of the creatures that you create so when you create an undead using a necromancy spell which create undead is a necromancy spell that does create undead the creature's maximum hit point is increased by an equal amount to your wizard level so by the time you're cast in this spell, you're 11th level, so all of these ghouls have 11 more hit points. And the creature adds your proficiency bonus to weapon damage rolls. 
So that's another plus four. So let's look at Ghoul. A Ghoul has 22 hit points. If a Necromancer ca uh, cast the spell, they have 33 hit points or more. And they do 2d6 plus 2 on a bite, which I... Okay, here's something that I also don't understand. Bite is only plus 2 to hit. Does that mean they're not proficient in their bite? How is a creature not proficient in one of its own attacks? I don't get that. Claw, they have a plus 4 to hit and does 2d4 plus 2 damage. Each one of these would actually do 2d6 plus 6 or 2d4 plus 4 damage. The DC save is horrendously low constitution save, which if you're an 11th level character, the CR creatures you're going up against will be able to wipe this creature out very quickly. And it basically it's a one round bag of hit points. And it's not, it's probably not going to hit. And if it does, it's not going to be able to paralyze the thing because the thing's going to make a saving throw. So it's a very underwhelming spell, you know, for, you can cast it outside of combat. I do understand that. And you will be casting it outside of combat. But essentially, these things are going to run in and they're going to be gone after that. And then you'll have to, you'll have to animate them again. So they're, they're like a one hit wonder in a combat where they're good for maybe one round and that's it whereas you could be picking better spells like chain lightning and using those instead of this all right that's what i got for everybody today i appreciate everybody tuning in and i will catch everybody later